Hello guys, today I'm going to discuss about the flanker family of Russian jets. It all started with the Su-27 flanker. And then they had the Su-30, they had the 33, 34, 35, and 37. Now the special thing about this family of jets is, they have a very deceptive look. And what I mean by that, I'll illustrate to you right now. This is the Su-27, and this is the Su-30. Now looking from the side, these planes are actually pretty different. But when viewed from the top, they virtually have no difference. This is the Su-27, this is the Su-30. As you can see, they have an absolutely identical top view. Even this tail boom going down the middle, which houses the drag chute, or the drogue chute. So, absolutely identical from the top, but when viewed from the side, they're so different. Now, what are their differences? Look at that. The Su-27 has a hump on its back. And on the other hand, the Su-30 has a streamlined back. The canopy actually merges into the ridge which goes down the back. Or should I call it the dorsal ridge. And here, the canopy does not merge into the dorsal ridge. It sticks out suddenly. It's like a sudden protrusion, like a bubble canopy. The other difference, look how snoopy and drooped down this one's nose is. The Su-27 has a dro droopy nose. It's like someone's dick is falling off. I'm sorry for the language, but that's what it is. It looks like a non-rigid dick, which is about to slack off. On the other hand, this has a smaller nose, which doesn't point as low or as downwards as this one. It's kind of firm. Um, this nose structure kind of reminds me of Mickey the Rat, who, as many of you know, is a parody on Mickey Mouse. Also reminds me of Snoopy the Dog. I mean, such a droopy nose, right? Now look at these planes. They look so incredibly similar from the top, yet so different from the side. And what's the reason behind this? Is there some sort of secret Russian deception game at play over here? Are they deliberately doing this to confuse enemy pilots and spotters? I think so. And the reason why I think this way is that not only did they make the Su-30 look different from the side, they also made it resemble another production aircraft which is manufactured in Russia. Many of you have guessed it by now and it's called the MiG-29. Look at this. Look at these two aircraft. Spitting image of one another, right? The Su-30 resembles the MiG-29. It looks like, you know, a stretched out larger version of this. See? Streamlined backs, right? The canopy merges into the back. The nose is not drooping down. They look absolutely the same. The only distinguishing factor is this tail boom, which houses the, uh, the drogue chute. Other than that, other than that, there, there's no telltale difference between these aircraft. They do, however, look incredibly different from the top. See, this is a MiG-29 and this is an Su-30. Look how different they appear from the top. But when viewed or looked at from the side, they look incredibly similar. Here are some real-life images to illustrate that point. This is a MiG-29. This is an Su-30. Look how incredibly similar these aircraft appear. From the side, if from the side, to an untrained eye, these aircraft have no differences. Especially when you're a spotter spotting from miles away. These differences will escape your eyes. Now there are a couple of tiny giveaways here, which helped, helped me actually ascertain the identity of the two different aircraft. The Su-30 has these ventral fins. See? The MiG-29 doesn't. Also, this is a twin-seater aircraft, so you can see two pilots. And here you can see one pilot. So those were the telltale differences. Now at great distance and at great speeds, these differences will not be easily spotted by amateur spotters and defense analysts alike. In some cases, it may even, it may even fool the enemy pilots. As if that wasn't enough, they also went ahead and changed the design of the MiG-29s as well. Here we're going to call them the Fulcrum family. Look at the MiG-29B and look at the MiG-29 SMT. The SMTs are the latest variants of the MiG-29. The MiG-29B, as demonstrated earlier, has a very streamlined back and the canopy merges into it. The SMT, on the other hand, 
has a discontinuous canopy, which suddenly pops out from the back. And it also has a hump or a hunchback, like the SU-27, extending all the way back to the tail end. So now you have MiGs not only resembling the SU-30, but also the SU-27. Look at how incredibly similar they are. The only difference being that the SMT does not have a nose which is as droopy and as sloped down downwards as that of the SU-27. Another difference that many people may point out in these pictures is the size difference. The MiG-29 is only 56 feet in length. On the other hand, the SU-30 is about 73 feet in length. It's actually a whole foot longer than the SU-27 aircraft. Although the nose may seem uh, proportionally smaller, but it is a foot longer in length. Now, so the size difference between these two aircraft is about 17 feet. But in terms of spotting these planes from far, far away, that difference of 15 feet hardly plays into the equation, as I demonstrated earlier. See, these two planes have a size difference of 15 feet. But is that in any way clear to your eyes when you're seeing these aircraft? So that size difference is not playing any major role in helping us distinguish these aircraft at great distances. What matters is the shape of their airframe being proportionally similar. And hence, the confusion still persists. At this point, many people may raise the question, what if the Russians are building their MiGs and their flankers to look alike? Well, in that case, my argument would be, that was not the case in the beginning. I mean, look at the top view. How incredibly different these aircraft appear. This is a MiG-29, this is an SU-30. From the top, there's hardly any resemblance. The leading edge root extension, or lurks for short. These are called lurks. Look how big the lurkses are on the MiG-29, and look how narrow and streamlined they are on the SU-27. So they look nothing alike from the top. And MiG-29s don't even have this long tail boom for housing the uh, dro uh, drogue shoots, or the drag shoots. But as the days go by, they try to make their aircraft look incredibly similar when compared to one another. This is the latest generation of MiG-29. Notice its uncanny resemblance to the SC-27 flanker. flanker. The two aircraft look absolutely alike. But remember back in the day what MiG-29s, real MiG-29s or old school MiG-29s looked like? Does anyone remember that? See, what resemblance does this aircraft have to this one over here? Absolutely nothing. Right? And this one looks like a genuine MiG-29. So they're mixing up the appearances of the aircraft in such a way that it becomes really, really confusing for defense analysts and amateur spotters alike. And in great speed, within short intervals of time and at great distances, it may be equally confusing for enemy fighter pilots as well. If things continue at this rate, then very soon down the line, all families of Russian aircraft will become virtually indistinguishable from one another. Their flanker. Same case here. MiG-29 SMTs have been delivered to the Algerian Air Force. Clearly resemble the original MiG-29. They bear no resemblance to it anymore. See, this looks like a MiG-29, but it's an Su-30. This is an Su-27. See, droopy nose, hunchback. This is a flanker. Another flanker. And so as you can all see, they don't play by any rules anymore, and everything has gone topsy-turvy. Now many people may argue that, look, this may not be a deliberate deception game being played by the Russians. It may simply be that they designed airframes which now they find extremely efficient. So they don't want to change it altogether. They just tweak, or just tweak things around a little bit according to the change of demands. So, ex so as for example, this hunchback may be nothing but the product of demand for greater combat radius, greater fuel capacity. So they have this hunchback here and no hunchback over here. And it is true. The Su-27 has a 500 kilometer advantage when it comes to range in comparison to the Su-30. It has 500 kilometers more range. And in terms of the droopy nose, the longer nose, it may be that it has a more powerful radar than this aircraft. So naturally, tweaking the same airframe around has caused these differences. But I don't buy that. I don't buy that argument for one second. Because, yes, you may tweak things around. There's nothing wrong with that. 
there's nothing wrong with anything. You can do whatever you want with your aircraft. As you're making it. You're making it, so you can do whatever you want. But it's not just the tweaking around. They go out of their way to deliberately make the Su-30s look like the MiG-29s. They tweak it around on purpose and go out of their way to make it resemble another production aircraft. And I've shown you the pictures to prove it. See, absolute spitting image. So that's the reason I think that these tweak arounds are being done on purpose to, to, make, to make one aircraft resemble the other and create a confusion in our minds. And as I said earlier, if this continues at, and if it continues at this rate, a few years down the line, all families of Russian aircraft will become virtually indistinguishable. And, and so it's not just the Su-30s they played around with, now they're playing around with the MiGs as well. So see, as years go by, the MiG-29s start resembling the Su-27s even more. Now they don't have a droopy nose, who knows? Maybe the next generation of MiG-29s will have that droopy nose. You know? 